My name is Pastor Brandon Petty. I come all the way from North Nashville, Tennessee. Y'all, come on somebody. Some of y'all are meeting me for the first time. Some of y'all just, you just know that I'm your dysfunctional cousin all the way from Tennessee. I am super honored to be here. I'll be preaching at real life in the morning too. So if you're, if you attend this church, I'll be here in the morning. Super grateful for your pastors, Vince and Jennifer Daniel. Can we give it up for your pastors? And then I want to give honor to Pastor Aaron for inviting me to come be a part of this. Give it up for Pastor Aaron. So while I got you standing in honor of the reading of the Word of God, we're going to jump into the text first thing. Is that cool? John chapter 1. I need you all paying attention, okay? Because tonight we ain't playing no games. Here we go. John chapter 1. Verse 35, the following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, look, there is the Lamb of God. How many of you know our life is to always point to the Lamb of God, point to Jesus, not to ourselves? When John's two disciples heard this, they dipped. They're like, peace out, John. We're following Jesus. And I love this. Jesus looked around and saw them following. And here's a question that all of you got to wrestle with. What do you want? Like, honestly, what do you want out of this Christianity thing? What do you want out of this church thing? What do you want out of this weekend? Some of you probably never even wrestled with that question until tonight. And he says this, they replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? They're like, I don't know you like that, bro. Why are you asking me where I live? But I love what he says. Are you ready? And this is what Jesus tells each and every one of you tonight come and see come and see and it was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying and here we go they remained with him now this word is going to be very important in this sermon so anytime we see this word you're going to say it with me you ready so they what with him the rest of the day now we're going to jump to john 15 a little lengthy but hang on with me i promise we'll get seated in a moment john 15 verse 1 And now I want to give you context. This is Jesus' farewell speech to his disciples. He knows he's about to go to the cross. And he knows, like, this is the last chance I've got to talk to my boys. I need to let them know what's on my heart. And here's what he says, John 15, verse 1. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned. And purified by the message I have given you. Here we go. Y'all ready? Help me out. In me. And I will. In you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. Y'all got to get that tonight. And you cannot be fruitful unless you what? In me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who what? In me. And I in them will produce much fruit for a part from me you can do nothing anyone who does not what in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned I don't know about y'all but I don't want to be a useless branch look at verse 7 but if you what in me and my words what in you you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. And here we go. We got a what? In my love. When you obey my commandments, you what? In my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments. And what? In his love. I'm, I'm catching a theme here. What about you guys? Last verse, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the subject of faith that's tethered. A faith that's tethered. Can we pray together? Father, right now, I pray that you prepare hearts. I pray to God, even the heart that is the furthest from you, you have prepared it to be engaged in your word tonight. 
you are breaking down strongholds, even piercing the coldest of hearts, the coldest of spirits. This is not a happenstance moment that every student and adult that's in this room tonight, you brought them here. And some of these adults think they were just babysitting this weekend, but they didn't realize they were going to be rocked by the word of God. I pray that every single person leaves this place differently than they came in. Have your way tonight. I've prepared and done all that I can do, Lord. You do what you can do, and that's transform hearts. And I pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody shouts. Find seven people right now. High five them, and you can find a seat. Remember, no gaps. Nobody, nobody go into the back. Everybody move up as, as close as you can and get together. I think I have a water over there, guys. I've done worship myself into a tizzy. <laughs> Thank you so much. So a little bit about me, and then, uh, but tonight's, the, hey, uh-oh, we got empty seats. We got a whole empty row right here. We got five empty seats here. I'll wait. I'm patient. We've got empty seats over here. We still got adults trying to go to the back. Come on, guys. I need everybody's cooperation tonight. Let's go, guys. Everybody. Adults, don't be afraid of them. I know they probably stink, but they're all right. I'm not going to make you raise your hand because it might be smelly, but who hasn't taken a shower this weekend? <laughs> I don't know, but all right, so here we go. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank you. I know this is uncomfortable. I know maybe you don't like doing this normally, but I'm telling you, something happens when the people of God get close together and not spread out and far apart. So listen, uh, my name is Brandon Petty. I well, me and a, and a team of people in a town called Portland, Tennessee, not much different than Mountain Home, Arkansas. We started a church, ten, we just celebrated 10 years as a church, and um, yeah, called Generation Church, just north of Nashville. We've seen almost 1,000 people baptized in 10 years. Uh, man, it's been an incredible journey, and I want you to know that your church has sown into our ministry. Your pastor has sown into me and my family, my wife. They could not be here with me this weekend, but I wanted to introduce you to them real quick. And so this is uh, my beautiful wife and my two daughters. My oldest daughter uh, on the far, your far left, is Lana. She just turned 16 and started driving, y'all. So um, my world has ended. And then uh, my beautiful wife, Jessica, in the middle. And then my beautiful, soon-to-be 13, 13 years old daughter, Maya, uh, on the far. So give you some context. Uh, Lana, she just turned 16, like I said, so she's, she'll be a junior in high school. Guys, she's already taken. She's dating Jesus. <laughs> that, was, that was cheesy. <laughs> no, she for real has a boyfriend, though. It's kind of disappointing. His name's Skylar, but I'm bigger than him and can beat him up, so that's cool. Um, and then um, uh, Maya, she, we call her the Holy Spirit of our house. So, like, she's the one, like, if she comes in and she'll be like, are we watching a movie? And she hears one cuss word. She's like, you seen that, you seen that gif with, with, like, the Grandpa Simpson where he comes in, sits down, and gets right back up, puts his hat on, and leaves the house? That's her. She's just like, nope, I'm out. Like, she's real sensitive. She's like my very organized OCD. She's up every morning writing in her journal, reading devotionals. Like, she's, I'm pretty sure she's more saved than any of us. So, um, but my wife and I, we're both on staff at our church, lead our church. And then... We have this guy, Truitt. He's my seven-year-old. And uh, man, it, yeah, he just got saved and baptized last Easter, so pump for that. But let me tell you something, when I say he is all boy, he is all boy. He is wild. And one of the things that I always like, like how many of you know, have you ever been in a situation where you have to repeat yourself a lot of times for, for somebody to get what you're saying? Some of y'all are like, I don't know what that's like. And it's like we're in student ministry. We know exactly what that's like. Right? Have you ever been like told, and people are like, no, I need you to look at me. Like, I, and you're like, okay, I got it, I got it. And then they do the exact opposite. You're like, we, I thought we talked about this. Right? That's my son, Truett. It's like, I know we talked about this. I've said this a million times. Why are we going through this again? I don't know nobody's ever experienced that. You've never had to do that in your life. But that's True Dog. And so we call him True Dog. He's my beatboxing, baseball playing, football playing, little crazy guy. But he loves well. He does. I love my family. Honored to be their dad, be the husband. But 
when you have to tell somebody something over and over again, how many of you know you're trying to express something really important? Do you realize that in our text, in John chapter 15, Jesus says the word remain 10 times. I don't know about you, but I think Jesus is trying to get us to see something. He's trying to get us to grasp a truth that's bigger than, can I tell you what most of our faith boils down to? If you're not careful, your faith boils down to just try to, try to go to church, try to do good. And uh, if you're really good, do more good than the bad, then God loves you and you get to heaven one day. And can I tell you tonight, that is not the gospel of Jesus. It's not the gospel. And you are experiencing, I mean, not even a smidgen of what God wants you to experience in a life living for the kingdom. And so in this text, Jesus uses this word called remain. How many you know remain means to stay? Everyone say stay. So throughout this message tonight, sometimes I'm going to say, hey, stay with me. I need you to repeat me. So stay with me. Stay with me. And that's what Jesus is saying. And so when we talk about this word tethered, this idea of tethered means to be tied to, to be stuck to something, to be tied to it, to be anchored to it. And what I believe a lot of you, if you're not careful, as you walk through your faith journey, you will tie your faith to the wrong things. Can I tell you what most of you will tie your faith to? Your experiences. And when you're not careful, the pain, can I tell you, some of you think that, man, I came to Jesus, so now, like, we think that Jesus is our all-American Jesus who's going to make our life better and better. Now I'm going to get the house, I'm going to get the girl, I'm going to get the dog, I'm going to get the job, I'm going to get the money. And now I won't suffer, and now I won't go through anything in life that's going to hurt me, I'm not going to lose any loved ones. And that's why some of you, you'll walk through something so traumatizing and hurtful that you will think that God is not for you and you will tie your faith to your experiences and walk away when life doesn't work out the way you want it to. And can I tell you, God, Jesus never promised that you would not go through something hard. But he did promise a peace in the midst of our pain. So here's the question I want all of us to wrestle with tonight. Is how do you have a faith that never fails in a world that always seems to fail you? Because isn't that what we feel? I mean, students, can we be real tonight? Have you ever had somebody fail you? Have you ever felt like no matter what I put my trust in, it doesn't seem to work out? Some of you are here tonight. I want to, first of all, tell you some of you are courageous because you're here tonight and your parents maybe don't have a faith. Maybe they're not church people. Maybe they're not into that whole Christian thing or that Jesus thing, but you're here tonight. I want you to know that you're here for a reason. God's calling you out of something. And so I want us to go back to this text just for a moment in John chapter 15. It's okay if we, if we spend some time right here because I think sometimes people think you guys aren't interested in the Bible, but the reality is some of us don't spend time really teaching you the Bible. And so I'm not going to sugarcoat it tonight. I'm not going to think that you're too shallow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach some Bible to you tonight. Is that okay? So John 15, verse 5, he says this. He says, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who what? So stay with me. Oh, that was lame. Here we go. Stay with me. He says, remain in me and I in them and, and, and will produce much fruit for apart from me you can do what? Nothing. And so now I know this is hard for us to get because a lot of you don't have vineyards in your backyard. Like you're not growing grapes. But I want you to get this picture of this vine that grows grapes. And how many of you know this vine or these branches that grow the grapes, they're not just laying on the ground anywhere producing fruit randomly, right? The water and the soil and everything that the vine is planted in produces the nutrients that goes to the branches that produces the fruit. So do you see what Jesus is trying to teach here? A lot of us, and that's why church involvement and community is so vital to your faith development. Because some of you are like, well, I'll just do this thing on my own. I'm going to try. But what you don't realize is that Jesus is saying that without him, without being connected to the vine, you cannot produce the fruit of a believer in your life. 
You can't do it. You can't do it just by coming to church once a week. There's something bigger here. There's something bigger about being connected and remaining and staying in him, not just staying in church, not just staying in religion, but staying in him. Are are y'all with me so far? And look what he says in verse 6. He says, anyone who does not what? In me is thrown away like a useless branch. And withers, such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. That sounds harsh. Can we agree? But can you also see his perspective of what Jesus is saying? He's saying, listen, because you didn't remain, you didn't produce fruit, and so therefore you wither up, and there's nothing else to do with a life who refuses to remain in Christ. In other words, he's saying, I didn't move. I didn't do this. You chose not to remain in me. Are you guys following me so far? Here we go. And he says... In verse 7, but if you what? In me, in my words, what? In you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. What? In my love, when you obey my commandments, you what? In my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments, and what? In his love, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. So here's the thing. I want you to understand something tonight, that when we see this encounter that Jesus has with these early disciples in John chapter 1, this was important to to tie it back to John 15, because he asked a question when they came to him, didn't they? What was the question? What do you want? And they asked, where do you reside? Where do you live? Are y'all sitting, like this is powerful. You know what we tend to do? We come to Jesus and instead of following Jesus, we come to Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, follow me. Their first question was, where are you going to be? Can I tell you what would really wreck a lot of us in here is if we stop asking God to bless everything that we're doing and follow us and go, God, where do you reside? I want to go where you're going. I want to be where you are. I want to live where you live. I want to reside where you, I want to remain where you are. And here's what Jesus said, come and see. Can I tell you this whole Jesus thing, this whole faith, it is not a club that you join. You guys aren't in here, and you're not real life gang members. I mean, some of you might be, I don't know. But like, it's not like real life, you know, you've got the tattoo and everything. Like, if you were, but if you walk away from this church, like, you know, they're coming after you, you know, it's not, it's not like that, I don't think. But you know what Jesus says? He says, hey, it's an invitation. Can I tell you, Jesus is not forcing any of you tonight to follow him, to do anything. He's saying, I'm inviting you not into a religion, not just into church. I'm inviting you into a way of life. And the fruit that comes from this, whoo, it's incredible. And he says, when your life produces this fruit, it brings glory to the Father, and this relationship is just in harmony, and it's a beautiful thing. But I cannot produce that fruit apart from him. And so I want to talk about tonight, first of all, I want you to understand you'll never experience the wonders of Jesus while attaching your life to the ways of this world. And some of y'all are going to have to make a decision tonight. Am I planting myself in culture, society, and the world and trying to get Jesus to follow me over here, or am I planting myself in the kingdom of God and remaining in him? Because you can't have it both ways. You can't produce fruit apart from him. And how many of you know, like, in times when we feel distant from God, it's not God that moves, it's usually us. Because we didn't ask Jesus where you at. So I want to give you three types of faith that are in this room tonight that we're going to walk through. The first type of faith is synthetic faith. Synthetic. I got some illustration stuff up here. So we got synthetic faith. How many of you know synthetic is fake? (laughs) 
Here we go. Hey, throw me one. Throw me one. I got, I got it already. I got it already. They're like, choo, choo, choo. All right, listen, 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 listen. Hey, get them after. Get them after. Get them after. Listen. Everybody sit down. So these are synthetic, synthetic bouncy balls, right? They're made of rubber. They're fake. It's, it's, it's just a, it's a fake synthetic rubber ball that bounces. Can I tell you, that's a lot of y'all's faith. It's fake. Now let me, get, let me get this. I want you to get this. Man, this is so good. This is so good. You ever had an illustration? You're like, this is so good. They're not going to appreciate this, but it's so good. So look, this represents the person with either no faith or the hypocrite. So here's what happens. You know what happened when I threw those balls out into the crowd? They bounced off of people, didn't they? They hit certain people. Some people may like, they're going to sue me now. Like they got hit in the eye. She's like, good idea. No. Did I hurt anybody? If I did, I'm sorry. It's a little bit, okay, it's Sue Real Life Church. But anyways, you know what's amazing? You know what's really dangerous about this? Some of y'all, if you, if you didn't catch this, you could slip and fall. It, it could hit somebody, right? So when you have a synthetic faith, you are following your emotions and your feelings. And a lot of times you injure people by how you live your life. And so even when you call yourself a Christian, a lot of times the impact you make in somebody's life can be a negative impact. And how you live your life can actually be a stumbling block. And when they walk your direction, they actually slip and fall. Like some of you, that's why I said you need to watch who you sit with tonight. Because some of you, Jesus is wanting to speak directly to you. And the person next to you is actually affecting your opportunity to hear the gospel because they have a synthetic faith. And that's why as a, as a hypocrite, do you know what the Greek word, it was a, it was a word that came from Greek. And, and this Greek, I about slipped and fell, I'm about to sue. So listen, but it actually meant actor. Now think about this. We can, we can pick them up afterward. We're good, we're good. So it actually meant actor. And they used this word hip, hypocrite for a person who performed on stage. So a hypocrite is not just a person who does one thing and says another, the hypocrite is actually the person that whatever person they are in front of, that is their audience and they feel like they have to perform to get affirmation from their audience. That's why some of you are hypocrites. It's not because you don't love Jesus, it's because you really don't have a relationship with Jesus. It's because in whoever you are in front of, you gotta get affirmation. That's why some of you, if you were like alone with your youth leaders, y'all be like, man, I just love the Lord. Hey, Pastor Aaron, can I serve Jesus? Can I, I'll help with worship. But then you get in a different corner with somebody else and your friends, you're acting like a hoodlum. You act like an unwise person, even though you know better. Anybody, like, here's the thing. Some of y'all have been in church long enough to know better, but you choose something. Why? Because your faith is synthetic. It really depends on which audience you're performing for. And that's why some of y'all, like, you got, I mean, you will, you'll take your you shirts. I, I, I kid y'all not. This was so funny. Not really. But, like, when we started our church, we handed out free shirts to everybody. Like every, every VIP, every first-time guest. And it was like the first six months of our church, I picked up the local paper and there's somebody's mugshot and he's wearing our VIP shirt. And I was like, well, on one hand, I'm glad that dude came to our church. On the other hand, it's like, man, that's really bad advertising, right? That's really terrible marketing. The point is this, guys. You can wear your shirts, your bracelets, your swag all you want. But that does, that's not the thing that's going to get you into heaven or in a relationship or a fruitful relationship with Jesus. So the synthetic faith, what you have to wrestle with is like some of you will follow your feelings and your emotions. In other words, you are bounced around by your experiences in life. And you have to decide when your faith is not stay, it's not remain. In other words, when Jesus says, stay with me, stay with me, when you don't stay with him, you are going to be bounced around in life. Like some of you, can I tell you, adults, I need your help right now. Some of you will make decisions now at 15 and 16 that you'll still be paying dividends on at 30. I know because I got friends that are doing it. Whether it's time in prison, 
broken relationships with their children because they had kids in high school and now, now they're dealing with the dysfunction of not being connected with their son or their daughter? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying tonight? This is all about like, who? can I tell you that character is built over a life of consistency. And so when you are following your emotions and feelings, you are not developing character. You are just being bounced around by every circumstance in your life. Because you are not connected to, the, to, to Jesus. You're not connected to the vine. And here's why this is important. Because character is not your behavior, it's your becoming. Because some of y'all, y'all can behave long enough to get by, can't you? It's like, okay, I'm in this room, I need to be quiet. If not, they're going to get me. But then you know, can I tell you, the real you is who you would be when nobody's looking. So a synthetic faith, if you have a synthetic faith, you're somebody different right now in this room, but you can't wait to get out of here tonight so you can be the real you. I'm preaching a lot better than y'all are letting on tonight, but that's okay. We're going to move on. We're going to move on. The second one is shallow. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be shallow. Don't be shallow. That's not really a song. I just sing it. Is it on the screen? Shallow? I don't see it. Shallow, okay. Shallow, there it is. Any volleyball players in the house? Anybody? Like for real, don't play, I, I like volleyball and you get up here and it's like, what's that? Um, volleyball players, yes, come on, yep, yep, come on up here, right here, or come up on stage. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up. I need one more. Come on, come on. Now, they've told y'all that they, they, Love volleyball. We're about to see how much. So I need one of y'all over here. And then one of y'all about where the table is. Y'all are going to volley this back and forth. Passing back and forth. Okay? Now, how many times y'all think they can pass it? Y'all think they can pass it 10 or more? I need hands raised. 10 or more. Less than five. Dang. Okay. All right. This is it. Whenever y'all ready, here we go. We got to count it. We got to count it. Here we go. One. Oh. Oh. We're going to give him another try. We're going to another try. Hey, that was a warm up. That's a warm up. Come on. Come on. Come on, y'all. One. Ow. Okay. We're going to give him one more try. One more try. Here we go. Here we go. Nice and easy. Come on. Oh, I thought she was really about to die for that. I'm like, she is a soldier, y'all. Let me see it. All right. So this is shallow faith. Y'all stay right where you're at. Here's the thing about a volleyball, y'all. Do you know how you know whether or not this ball is going to be successful in its flight? It depends on who touches it. Because if the wrong person touches it in the wrong way or can't pass it, it ends up on the floor. Don't miss this. Y'all stay with me just for a moment. You are going to be impacted in your life by who is in your life. Some of you will allow your friends to dictate your faith. Some of you, like, I, I watch you. I know, I've been, guys, I did student ministry for 15 years. I'm not stupid. You'll watch, especially like the tough guys, they're like, well, is my boys going to worship? Are my boys going up there? If they ain't going up there, I ain't going up there. No, we the tough guys. Oh, y'all going up there? Okay, I'll go up there. <laughs> like, y'all just following your friends. Some of you will... Base your faith on your parents' faith. Can I tell you, just because you are raised in church does not guarantee you a ticket in heaven. I've talked to people all the time, like, hey, man, you follow Jesus? Oh, I mean, I, my home church is that one. I haven't been in a long time, but that's my home church, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I didn't ask you if you went to a church. I asked you if you were a follower of Jesus. Some of you will place your faith and how many, how many times you've came to youth camp. Can I be real with you just for a moment? I need you to look around, and in all seriousness, look around you right now. 
in all seriousness, no playing around, no goofing off. In three years, some of these people won't be anywhere near a church. Because they're going to make decisions based off of the people they have in their life. And it's going to send them just anywhere. How many of you know when you do not remain in Jesus, you allow your life to be impacted by other people's choices? Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. Give it up for our volleyball players. Here's the thing. You know what that means for some of you? That means you need to ask yourself, who do I want in my life? Can I tell you, young man, I didn't have a father growing up, and I would have done anything to have a mentor to mentor me when I was younger. It wasn't until I was in my late 20s and early 30s before I found men of God to pour into me. Men like a Pastor Jeff Smith, a Pastor Vince Daniel. People who were, who were in my life because they wanted to see my life become more full of joy, not just full of religion. And if you are not careful, I want you to understand something. Anybody know what the word theology means? Raise your hand if you know what theology means. Everybody look right here. Theology means, and that's, that's concerning because not many students raise their hand. I want you all to get this. Theology is your belief about who God is and the character of God. And here's what I want you to get. If you get nothing else tonight, this statement is so important. Never allow your experiences to determine your, th your theology. Your theology should shape your experiences. In other words, just because grandma died of cancer doesn't mean God is an unloving God and that he's not sovereign. Just because you walked through life and didn't have that father or didn't have the parents that you hoped for or you watched somebody in your life be destroyed, their life be destroyed by drug abuse or alcohol abuse doesn't mean that God is not a loving God and that he's not real. And if we're not careful, we allow our experiences to dictate how we view God. Instead of understanding, because I've remained in him, I've seen the love of the Father. I've seen the love of, I've seen his healing hand. I've seen his delivering hand. And I know no matter what comes in my life, no matter what hell comes my way, I know that his heart for me is for good and not for evil. You know why? Because I've learned to remain in him. Are y'all with me tonight? One more. Now, this is the faith that I want us all to have tonight. And it's a faith that's tethered. It's tethered. Anybody ever played tetherball? Man, it's, it was like, it's crazy because, like, I played this thing as a kid. Like, on the playground. Like, that's how long this thing's been around. I'm pretty sure Moses played tetherball. You know what I'm saying? Now, I want y'all with me tonight. I want y'all with me, okay? I'm not, I'm not asking anybody to come up. Y'all are like, I want to go play. <laughs> y'all, we'll knock out one of the worship leaders. We ain't trying to do that right now. Now, listen. Listen, this is so important, guys. We're almost there. We're almost to that moment. I need you listening, okay? Please, right here. Adults, too. The thing about tetherball is, I mean, we'd be out in the playground. I don't know about some of you guys, but we're trying to, like, crush this thing, right? I mean, you're just, boom, boom, just trying to kill. And you don't care if it hits the person in the face. You don't care because you, your goal is to get this thing wrapped around. Here's what's amazing about tetherball. I can throw those bouncy balls, and they'll go as far as they'll bounce. I can hit a volleyball and hit it wrong, and it'll bounce somewhere off to the wayside. But no matter how hard I hit this ball, it remains attached to this pole. It's tethered. It's tethered. It's tied to. And that's what life does to us. Life pounds us and pounds us and pounds us. But here's the amazing thing, is that when I remain in Jesus, no matter how much life hits me, I'm still stuck to the Savior. And he's saying, stay with me. Whew. Stay with me.
here's what I know about a good tetherball set is that it's, it gets tested by hard. You hit it, doesn't it? Can I tell you, a faith that is tethered is a faith that is tested. You can't remain in Jesus when your decisions leave him out. Can I tell you guys, man, I've had life do everything it can to not. Can I, can I tell you what I've wrestled with? Man, I've wrestled with like, how do, how do I remain faithful when nobody in my life has remained faithful? Nobody's taught me faithfulness. Talking about stay with me. Who stayed with me? My mom didn't stay with me. When I was 15, she went to prison for drugs, abandoned. My father, I didn't know him until I was almost 16 years old. Stay, stay with me. Stay with me? Nobody else stayed with me. All throughout my life was nothing about, it was nothing but abandonment. It was nothing but people leaving. Then my mom gets out of prison, goes back to prison again. Talking about stay with, mom, stay with me this time. 25 years I watched her battle addiction. Mom, stay with me. Finding her on the side of the road, overdosed. Mom, stay with me. Dad, stay with me. Finally, I get to restore that relationship with my father. And man, it's, I, I'm 38 years old. And I'm like, man, finally my dad and I are talking. We're restored. God is restored. And all of a sudden, like, stay with me. And I wake up one week before Father's Day on 2015. I get the phone call that my dad dropped dead, dead of a heart attack. Are you kidding me? Stay with somebody. Stay with me. Somebody in my life, right? And it seems like my story was nothing but somebody that was, somebody stay with me from growing up in a home that was nothing but physical and sexual abuse, growing up watching people kill themselves on drugs and alcohol on my mom and dad's side of the family. Nobody stayed married. People went to prison. People died because of their life choices. And I come all the way back to this moment with my mom laying in a nursing home. And now I'm battling this whole thing. I prayed at the first of the year, God, give me the grace and peace to love my mom the way I need to love her. And a month later, she ends up in the hospital. And now the last five months, God has been teaching me how to love unconditionally because now, no matter how much I felt abandoned by her, can I tell you, I have a chance to stay with her. And let me tell you something. I was an angry young man. I walked through my entire elementary, middle school, and high school days fighting and weeping and angry and bitter. But when I turned 18, you guys hear me right now, and I walked into a church service one morning, and man, the, the Holy Spirit, man, snatched me up. When I say he snatched me up, I mean, I'm telling you guys, it was clear. It wasn't just some moment of like, I really need some help right now. It was like, God, if I, if, if you are real, I need you right now, because if not, I'm not going to make it in this life. And man, I met a father in heaven, y'all hear me right now, who has stayed with me. He has remained. He stayed with me through the years where I was rebellious. He stayed through the years where I was ignorant. He stayed through the years when I misbehaved. He stayed through the years when I was unfaithful. He was faithful through all the years when I said, God, I can't do this. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to walk away from ministry. I want to walk away from my faith. But every time the enemy hit me and came at me, I'll tell you something. I may have been washed around and kicked around, but at the end of the day, you know where I ended up? Up, right back in the arms of the Savior because he stayed with me. But you got to choose to stay. Two things. One, tonight you need to surrender. Full surrender. You know what full surrender looks like? I've never seen somebody surrender in their terms. Hey, I'm coming out, but listen, I'm going to need some uh, 
candy and cu- I, I'll, I'll surrender if you give me all of this stuff. When you surrender, you're going, I, got, I, I can't do anything. I, I've got zero control right now. I'm in your possession. I'm in your hands. Surrendering tonight does not look like, Jesus, I need some help. It's saying, Jesus, there's nothing else in this world that will do. I want to remain with you. I didn't even mean that to be a rap, but there you go. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying tonight? Some of you need to surrender. To say nobody else has stayed, but you will stay. Therefore, I'll stay. And the second thing, stay connected. Can I tell you? Guys, that means it's bigger than just showing up. I expect y'all to show up to church tomorrow with your Bible, ready to take notes for the sermon, ready to engage, ready to say, God, okay, I need to start, I need to ask Pastor Aaron, Aaron, how do you have a prayer time? I need to start learning how to pray. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to have a prayer time. Can I tell you, all of these things, you know what was amazing about when Jesus said, remain in me, and he talked about the vine? Have you ever, has anybody ever even seen a vineyard? The vines do not grow just anywhere along the ground. They build what's called a trellis. And this trellis is usually a wooden lattice or a wooden structure that the vine grows on. In other words, it is a system for the vine to be able to grow. You will never grow in your faith if you don't create the systems for growth in your life. And that means I need a Christian community. I need a local church to be a part of. I need a pastor. I need a mentor. I need to start reading my Bible. Not just watching it on the big Bible in the sky, but having my own Bible and diving into it and asking questions. I need to develop a prayer life. I need to learn. Like, if you can learn this stuff now, if you don't stay connected, all of this tonight is nothing but an emotional rise that you'll walk away and go, I appreciate it, but then you'll bounce through life. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not because God doesn't love you or that he's not there. It's because you refuse to stay with him. So you have to understand that when there's no system for you to walk out your faith, go ahead and put that on the screen, please. Don't be surprised when your faith gets walked on. And so tonight I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you to stand. Everybody stand. Nobody's heads are bowed. Nobody's going to do this with nobody watching. But maybe tonight, I'm not talking about this is the third night in a row I'm getting saved. I'm talking about like tonight, you know, I don't care if you're in the room and you're 60 or you're 12. But tonight you're like, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. Full surrender. And I need to stay connected to him because honestly, my, my faith has been synthetic. It's been fake. It's been emotional. I've just followed my friends. And if your friends all left tonight and said, man, I'm done with this Jesus stuff, what would you do? Because the answer to that question lets you know what your real faith is. Maybe your faith has been shallow and it's just like, I'm just kind of bouncing around. And you can't be surprised when your faith is always like this, when your faith is being based on other people's decisions. But maybe tonight you say, tonight, I'm ready to get tethered. I'm ready to tie my life to the Savior. And it starts with full surrender. I'm going to count to three in a minute. And man, I want you to walk to the front of the stage with confidence and boldness going tonight. Tonight, Jesus, I want to stay with you. And I want to surrender everything. I'm going to devote my life to following you. Because I want you to hear me tonight. Jesus is not going to force you to do it. But it's a beautiful invitation. Not to a religion or a club, but to a way of life that changes the world around you if you'll let it. On the count of three, if you're ready to surrender tonight, I'm going to ask you to come forward. One, this is your moment. Two, three, right now. Right now, just come forward.